Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Southern Cross University's Open Day for 2022. Um, this is our panel on arts and humanities, so thank you for joining us this morning. Um, before we begin, I'd like to pay our respects to our Aboriginals uh, past and present. Um, and one thing I learnt uh, recently is that um, the tribes in the local area descended from three families um, that formed the tribes over 10,000 years ago. So uh, that was really interesting. I wanted to share that with you guys today. So today uh, it's a 25 minute panel. There'll be uh, time at the end to ask questions about five or 10 minutes. Um, I'd like to introduce our panelists for you today. Uh, we've been very lucky to uh, be joined by Amy Simpson from Hotter, uh, Camille, who's one of our students, and Dr. Erica Karush. Yeah, I've got the last name right. So thanks, ladies. Um, I'd like to start by asking you each to introduce yourself uh, and what your connection to Southern Cross is. So if I can start with you, Erica. Well, I'm the course coordinator for the Bachelor of Arts um, and I teach one of the core units um, in the arts degree. Um, and I also teach units in cultural studies as well. Hi everybody, um, I am Camille, I am a uh, Bachelor of Social Science student. I'm majoring in politics and government, which um, is not something that I ever imagined myself studying, um, but I'm local in the area and yeah. Um, my name's Amy, I'm um, the head of gallery, ha head of exhibitions and um, collection management at Hodder Gallery. Our connection is really, um, there's a relationship with Hodder and Southern Cross University. I did not attend this university. No, but yes, no, yes, yes, yeah. The relationship is between Hodder and Southern Cross. Yeah, yeah, and which we're very proud of. I think yeah. um, Dean Gould went and joined um, one of the opening of one of yeah. your exhibitions. So, yeah, uh, yeah very uh, proud of our partnership with yeah. you. So, thank you all for joining us. I'm going to start by asking Erica. Our arts degree is one of our most flexible degrees mm. that we've got on offer. Can you tell us about all of the electives, uh, yeah. or give us some examples of some of the electives on offer as part of the arts degree? Yeah, well, we have six majors. So we have um, creative writing, uh, we have uh, digital media, we have cultural studies, we have a history major, we've got uh, politics and international relations, which Camille's doing, and we've also got a really uh, strong social science major taught by people with very fantastic research skills. Yeah, no, fantastic. Thank you. It gives us a little bit of an understanding as to all the options that you might take mm. as part of an arts degree. And Camille, you've touched on your major that you're studying. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us some of the really exciting things that you've come across uh, as part of your studies already? Oh, gosh. Um, so much of it has been really interesting to me and, and things that I didn't know were going to be interesting to me. It's, it's been a real discovery of myself as well um, studying. So you know, things like economic theories that sound so boring, but when you, you know, are studying it and you realise how it fits into this, you know, interconnected sort of universe we're in, it's, um, it suddenly becomes fascinating and you surprise yourself. So, yeah, it's been interesting, the different units and how they all come together and how they sort of fit with each other has, yeah. has been very interesting. And, and do you get the chance to have some sort of real life experiences or can you relate it back to your life, some of the studies that you're doing? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's a very broad degree. So, um, yeah, it's definitely um, a lot of the units that I've done have sort of marinated in my head over time and, and yeah, you can definitely apply them to like my workplace at the moment. Um, I work for the... <coughs> Sorry, the Aboriginal Legal Service. So, um, a lot of my units have sort of uh, solidified some of the things I've, that ha have sort of been ruminating in my head over the years, and um, and really made me understand what my values are and, yeah. and where yeah. I want to take these sort of the information that I've got now. Yeah, that's great. Amy, did you yourself study an arts degree or, yeah? Yes, yeah. so I um, did an arts degree in Sydney, at yeah. Sydney University, um, and I majored in art history, English and Italian. Yeah. And um, it really just sort of, again, solidified what I wanted to do. Yeah. I, I think that I sort of thought that, um, like Camille, I was um, studying things like the history of the hat. <laughs> who, who wants to know that? But... <laughs> 
it has helped me to sort of get that sort of broad understanding of society and where, where it sticks into and everything. Yeah. So yeah, and I'm, the ability to research. Yeah, the ability to research, the ability yeah. to sort of think outside the box, answer trivia. You know, yeah. things like that. So, <laughs> Does um, come in handy. <laughs> yeah, but it just it wasn't. Um, yeah, you know, everyone's like, "Why are you doing that?" But it 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 has helped me. Like you know, my life now is spreadsheets and. It's that critical thinking of thinking of this task, how am I going to complete it and get to the other end? And um, that's what the arts degree really sort of gave me. Yeah. Did and you it let me go into next? Yeah. Study. Did you always see, like, as you were sort of finishing high school, which we've got obviously a couple of high school students with us today, was it always a passion for arts that led you? No, I yeah. started doing early childhood education. Yeah. I did, much to my mother's decline, I did three and a half years and quit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nearly there. I, nearly there. Um, and then I went and did an arts degree. Yeah, and, and, I, yeah. and I loved it. Like it was like I found my home, and I was yeah. like, actually, this is this allows me the thinking. It was. Yeah. I didn't agree with the education, but everything, but um, way it was going. So, but with the arts degree, I just loved everything. Yeah. Because I got to choose what I wanted to do. And I think um, that's one thing. I, if I can take the opportunity yeah. now, just to sort of say, it is difficult when you're starting out you know, as you're finishing high school to know what it is you might do, what might be your career for at least the next sort of five to ten years of your life. So know that um, university is a great place to explore yeah. ideas and different study areas. Uh, and you may not get it right with your first choice, yeah. um, but you can use um, the different units that you've taken as credit towards other degrees. So just keep in mind um, what your end goal might be and that whatever you're passionate about, you can take those passions uh, and sort of forge a career with it. Um, so yeah, keep in mind that a lot of people don't get it right and that, that first and time. And that's exactly what I did. I used some of the credit from my t um, education to help get my arts degree yeah. quicker. Yeah. And then, you know, I really loved what I did and I went you know what actually I do want to go into the arts the arts were always in my life yeah and I went actually I, that's what I want to do and then I went on to my master's yeah and where it was very much an arts yeah and I think the arts degree. degree is a great course for transferable skills yeah. um, so I might ask Erica if you can sort of expand on that idea of what transferable skills are and what you know how the arts degree is probably a great course uh, to develop those um, transferable skills are those skills that can be used in a whole range of environments. It might be an environment you work in, you study in, or even just your everyday life. They work in all different kinds of spots. And I guess there are some transferable skills that a Bachelor of Arts gives you that I think are extremely powerful. Um, the first of these is critical thinking, as you mentioned. The ability to approach a problem or a debate and to critically evaluate what the most reliable or sound position is by looking at ar evidence and arguments, that skill will be useful to you in any workplace you uh, go into or um, in any of your study environments. The other skill that I think is very powerful um, is the skill or other skills to read a lot of information, reflect on it, and then write about it. This is a very powerful tool. You can use it in all sorts of areas of work. Um, it's most obviously relevant to research, but there's very few workplaces that doesn't have a role for people who can do those kinds of things. Yeah, no, that's great. Thank you. And I think um, some of the stats I've read over the years is that people are changing uh, their career or their position uh, every few years now. So to be able to have a set of transferable skills um, is very powerful. Um, so thanks for sharing some of that. Um, Camille, I might uh, ask you some about flexibility of study now. So um, we're all trying to fit a lot into our lives. You know, we're working, um, some of us have families, there's a lot of commitments. Can I get you to sort of talk about like maybe whether it's your typical week or some of the flexible options that Southern Cross offers with your studies? Sure. So it is very flexible. Um, I, I've got two kids of my own. Um, they play a lot of sport. I've got, um, you know, I'm working part-time. I'm also volunteering part-time. Um, finding time to study has been difficult sometimes. Um, you have to prioritise it and your first year can often be very difficult. You're trying to find your feet. You, you know, I dropped out of school very early when I was 16. I've never written an essay in my life. Um, my reports were terrible. <laughs> um, and so the first year was really um, just finding my way and, and sort of getting myself into a routine as the, as the years went on. Um, I've become better at it, but uh, you know, with online study, 
you can sort of choose when you, to fit in with your own life. Um, you know, if you need extensions, they're there if you if you need them. So, um, yeah, it is quite flexible. Yeah. Um, and did you take any of your subjects online at all? I did. Yeah. Um, not really by choice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mostly from yeah. COVID. Um, everything went online and that was a difficult learning curve for me because I do like to be in a classroom talking to people. Um, and it's not just the conversations you have with your other students. It's, you know, the conversations you overhear or just the banter that sort of goes on, you're throwing ideas around. But um, online as well, you do have the opportunity to do that. Uh, you, you know, you have your discussion boards and the tutors are really good at trying to force people to speak up and take part. So, yeah. um, you know, if you're a shy person, it can sometimes be easy to just hide at the back and not participate, participate as much. But... Um, I think the further you go into your degree, the more confidence you gain and yeah. the more you're willing to put yourself out there and share your own ideas and yeah. contribute. And I think, um, you know, it's it's really a personal choice. Some people are more comfortable in that online space and would choose to take on um, some subjects or their whole degree online um, with Camille. And to be honest, I'm probably a little bit the same, is that face-to-face -face learning. I really appreciate that opportunity I to engage too, directly. Um, being a mature age student, you know, it's yeah. <laughs> for us, it, it, yeah. we're used to that sort of thing. But younger people these days, they do everything online. and More and more confident and more in that space. Yeah. You know, online. So it, it's really a matter of personal yeah. preference. And I think um, that's the beauty and one of the flexible options that we can offer is that, particularly with a Bachelor of Arts degree, um, is that you can choose to study your whole degree online, you can choose to study face-to-face, -face, or you can actually do a bit of a hybrid as well and be a face-to-face -face student but pick up a couple of online subjects just to create that little bit of flexibility around your life, which is great. Um, Amy, can I ask you to sort of talk about what um, you would recommend to, you know, our students starting out uh, with their studies. Like we, we, we chatted a little bit before about, you know, not worrying too much that if you, you don't make the right choice with your course selection, is there any other sort of tips you would offer people as they're sort of either finishing off high school, like a, quite a few people are with us today, um, or looking to change their career? Um, is there anything you'd recommend when they were considering some study options? Um. I think the biggest thing I learnt was um, it's not the end of study. Like getting the degree is not the end. It's like that lifelong learning start. So don't think it's a, a, a be all and end all. I have to have a degree to get a job. It's like, you know, the skills I learnt in this degree I use when I do a course in um, with my friends on how to bake cakes or, you know, you know things like that. Like it's, it's still that, that those skills that I've learnt are helping me to do other things. Like I went on and did a master's and other things. It wasn't the end of my degree. So I would say that's yeah, the major lifelong thing learning, I, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It gave me those skill sets and that, that energy to do that yeah. and to the differences yeah. and what I actually liked. Yeah. Um, and I would say, I, I mean, I'm probably old school too, but I the, the thing I loved most was being on site. Like I'd been at school and I and it was a very small school that I had been to and I had my set of friends and we were all very similar people and I got to university and it's a whole other spectrum of people that you get to meet, learn, learn those different different viewpoints and everything. And I, I think in the first year I really needed that on site learning yeah. to do that. I always say to my teenage daughter as well, just follow what you're passionate about yeah. because um, you know, you'll go to university and you do feel like your world's opening yeah. up because you're meeting people that are really interested in what you're interested in, whatever yeah. it is that you choose to study. So yeah, um, yeah you know, and, come and, and give it a go. Just you know, like I read the um, coursework when I first got like the book of what the courses were. It's like a shopping list of my interests. So for the first year, it was sort of like, okay, I really like art history. I like fashion. I like this. And I really just did yeah. those. And then in the second year, I was like, oh, I might expand to this. I might yeah. expand to that. So yeah. just, um, yeah, go with what you're passionate yeah. about because that's what you'll really yeah. learn your skills for first. I will say as well, if you're not um, com comfortable to sort of take on a bachelor degree um, to start with and you sort of think, oh, I just want to tip my toe in the water, um, one of the things that you might consider is our Diploma of Arts. So um, what you study in the Diploma of Arts can actually, you can take on uh, and put it towards your Bachelor of Arts. Um, Amy, I might get you to sort of talk about credit if you're comfortable to, like that transition from a Diploma to a Bachelor of Arts, if you wanted to sort of expand there. So if you complete the if you complete the diploma um, in arts, you'll get eight units of credit into your BA, which is a whole year's worth of study. Yeah. 
Yeah, which is great. And it just means you sort of take on your study in bite-sized pieces too, that if you maybe haven't studied for a little while or you're a little not so confident about uh, your skills at a, you know, university level, then there are options for you as well. So, um, and they're very well subsidised by the government at the moment as well. So it's something else to consider as well. I might um, stay with you, Erica, if it's okay, and talk about what some of the graduate opportunities are. So if you've completed a Bachelor of Degree, what would be maybe some of the job opportunities that people could expect? Well, very broad, actually, and uh, certainly um, in my lifetime, after my BA, I worked in government, I worked uh, for parliament. Um, people uh, completing BAs might move into uh, non-government work in administrative areas or research areas. Um, and it's also a good basis for working in cultural and community organisations as well as Amy shows, I think. Mm, no, thank you. And I think it's the world's your oyster really, isn't it? Like yeah. uh, bachelor of De uh, the Bachelor of Arts is a great foundational course. So uh, if you are a little bit unsure, then I would definitely recommend this as an option because it can just lead to so many things, mm. uh, which is great. Um, Camille, we've touched on the flexibility of the courses, the fact that you can study on campus, online, full-time, part-time, all of those sorts of things. Heaps of flexibility in terms of your subject matter. Yeah. Um, if I can ask you typically what your week looks like, what do you need to commit to each unit? Um, they talk about 20 hours. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, sometimes unrealistic. What, what did that mean for you, like per unit? Well, for me, I think it's every person is different. Some people will fly through units and get all HDs and be working full time and be, you know, just... I don't understand how those people do, <laughs> do it, but, you know, they exist. And I'm a person that likes to um, really take my time. So I, I do study part-time, but um, I make sure that the time that I can study is spent undistracted. You know, I've deleted all my social media apps and um, it's it's very easy to get distracted when you find something difficult. Um, yeah. You know, go grab a snack and <laughs> decide to put on some washing. So you've got to really force yourself to sit there and, and immerse yourself uninterrupted. Um, and, and there are people here that, you know, will help you with that. Um, I remember when I first started, we had Barry Lane come into our classroom and talk about, you know, how to balance your life and make sure you go for a walk, get some exercise, eat healthy, yeah. you know, um, to try and make it easier for you. But, um, yeah, I just have to dedicate my free time that I have uh, to... To your really studies. Trying to study, which, yeah. is, which is normally for me in a, in a week that's um, while my kids are at school, although they are always sick. Um, <laughs> Especially <laughs> at the moment. It really bothers me. <laughs> I always think that I'm going to study on the weekends, but when my children are around, it just doesn't happen. Um, so you have to be really realistic, um, you know, and, and I mean, I've spent a lot of nights, uh, have eight o'clock coffee and yeah. power on through to 1am. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, but as the as I've gone on in my course, I've got better and better at um, time management. Time management, yeah. exactly, and yeah. that's you know another a skill. Skill, yeah, um, yeah, and and really just applying yourself when you yeah. when you have the yeah. Time. I will um, just take the opportunity to talk about our new model here. So Southern Cross University um, has a new model. We transitioned a lot of our study areas this year to the new model. And to put it as simply as possible, a typical university calendar will be four units or four subjects in a 12-week period. With our new model, you're only concentrating on two units or two subjects in a six-week period. So effectively, you're doing the same number of units or the same number of subjects in a year but the new model gives you the opportunity to just focus on those two units so that just means assessment for those two units managing your time for those two units um, and the students that are participating in that new model now are really talking about uh, a, a more deeper sense of learning um, being able to balance their time 
um, all of that sort of stuff. So it's definitely something we're very proud of at the university uh, and all of our courses will be transitioned um, by 2023 into this new format. So we consider it a really great point of difference for us um, and our team here today are more than happy to sort of offer any question or answer any questions that you might have about that new model. Um, so we're going to open the floor to questions. Um, Erica, I will, I know you absolutely love your area um, in art, so I'll give you a couple of, a minute or two just to sort of talk about cultural studies mm. because I know it's a real passionate area for you. Yeah. So did you want to tell us a little bit about that, see if we can sell some people to join you with I that? Do, I, do, I, do love to, I do love to sell cultural <laughs> studies. Um, so we teach um, cultural studies at Southern Cross as the study of everyday life and everyday culture. So you learn to look analytically and critically and creatively at the, you know, what do you swim in every day? You know, the things you do every day, whether it's eating or sport and so on. And we try to write our units so that you get to bring what you're passionate about to the, to the, um, to your studies. So if you like surfing or if you like gaming, um, or if you like gardening, you'll have the opportunity at some point to examine um, those practices really closely and learn more deeply about their cultural dynamics. Um, it's a very, um, it's also driven very much by looking at questions of social justice in culture. So we look at the dynamics of power and justice when we look at cultural practices as well. Mm. So uh, the foundational unit is doing cultural studies and I teach it and I teach into some later units as well. So I hope to see some of you there. That should be great. Okay, well, thank you very much, you guys, for joining us. We really appreciate your time.